No, Google Shopping campaigns are so complicated. Relax, relax. I'm going to show you how to set up your Google Shopping campaigns in the easiest way possible in this video. Let's go. Hey guys, Sam here from keycommerce.com and today I'm going to show you how to set up your Google Shopping campaigns from scratch. This video has everything you need to set up those Google Shopping campaigns. I've been running profitable Google Shopping campaigns for a number of years now and I've scaled up dozens of stores using these campaigns. I run an e-commerce marketing agency. We run Google Shopping campaigns for all our clients and we also have our own store that we run them for. This is agency level knowledge right here and I've made it really simple so you guys can follow along and create your own campaign. In this video, we'll be using the content API method to do this. I've made videos on two other methods for setting up your Google Shopping campaigns. I'll leave a link in the description to these other methods and you can check them out too. Okay guys, I'm sure you know what Google Shopping ads are. They are the ads that show up in Google search results that are different from the regular text search ads. They are amazing for e-commerce stores because they show people what the product looks like with an image as well as the price. In all our accounts, we generally find that shopping campaigns perform much better than regular search campaigns. They generate more sales and do so more profitably. Okay guys, let's jump into my computer and start the process. Okay guys, let's create our Google Merchant Center account. Let's go to Google, type in Google Merchant Center. Click on the first result for Merchant Center. And we're gonna click get started. It's gonna ask us to enter in our business information. Make sure that you're using the same email that's gonna be used on your Google Analytics account and your Google Ads account. If they're all the same email, it's gonna be so much easier because Google's gonna automatically see that you own all these accounts and it's easy to link them all up. Select your country, your business display name. This is gonna be what your business looks like in Merchant Center for yourself and your time zone, really important for reporting. So mine's key surface, and I'm gonna do West Coast. And you have to agree to the Merchant, uh, the merchant Center Terms and Conditions, click Continue. Great, so this is gonna choose what programs we're gonna sign up for on Merchant Center. We're gonna choose Surfaces Across Google and Shopping Ads. Now, Surfaces Across Google, this is the free organic listings on Google. By setting up the Merchant Center account the way we're gonna set it up, we get to access these listings. But we're also gonna do the shopping ads, the paid ads, that's what we're here for. So once we click that, we click Create Account. So now we've started creating our account. So now we're gonna go through and set up first the Surfaces Across Google. All the stuff we set up here is basically gonna affect shopping anyway, so we're gonna set this up together. So we're gonna go through, and before we do our products, let's do uh, the other parts. So first let's go, uh, get our website linked up to Merchant Center. So click that bottom one and then website URL. This is your website URL. So go get your Shopify URL, uh, your actual final URL that the customer sees. Mine's keysurface.com. Click save. You then have to claim this URL. So we have to verify and claim. Now I'm gonna show you the easiest way to do this, which is the bottom right hand corner, I have access to my server. And I'm gonna take you through this step by step. So click I have access to my server. Now, all we have to do here is just add this little bit of HTML to our homepage. Super easy. I'm gonna take you through it step by step. So all we have to do is copy that. Click that button, it's gonna copy it to clipboard. And we're gonna open up our Shopify dashboard. So here I'm on the Shopify dashboard. On the left-hand side, I'm going to go down to online store. I'm gonna to go to themes. And then I'm gonna go click actions and then edit code. Now we're gonna to go to theme liquid. Make sure you're in theme.liquid, really important guys. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down until we see the, the slash head. It's gotta be slash head, it can't be head by itself, slash head. And you can easily find this by just searching in the search box for exactly this. So just copy exactly what I search here, it's gonna find that exact code. There's only one of them in the whole page. And we're gonna paste that code right above this. It's super simple guys, that's all you have to do. Right above that slash head, and there's my code. And you see it's always right before the body class. There is another head element up the top because there's an open and there's a close. That's the open right there. But down the bottom, we want to put it right before the closing one. Click save. All right, guys, let's now verify that we've actually installed it properly. So click the little eye icon, open up your home page, and then all you have to do is right click and select view page source. Now this is the code of the website and we'll be able to find the tag here if you actually saved that code before. 
So all you have to do is just search for that open brackets, I don't know what you call it, and then head, and then you'll see it there. And then right above that, you'll see our Google site verification tag is right there, exactly what we pasted. So no boom, it's there on the website. And now we just have to go back to Merchant Center and get it verified. All right, guys, so now we're back in Merchant Center and we just have to click verify URL. Boom, we're now verified. All we have to do now is click claim URL in the bottom right hand corner. Mine's gonna say, it's gonna have a yellow box saying that I need to reclaim it, that's fine. You might have that as well if you've already tried setting this up before. That's totally fine guys, but click claim URL in the bottom right hand corner. Right there, one other Merchant Center account exists with this website. That's because I tried setting it up before. Click claim URL, it's gonna override that one. And now it's green, both are green, awesome, fantastic. It's gonna refresh. Beautiful, that looks fantastic. Let's go back to the Merchant Center account and let's keep setting up the rest of our account. So next we have to set up the settings. So go to set up shipping. Awesome guys, so for the shipping settings, I've got a whole video on shipping settings, but I'm gonna go through it here with you anyway. What you need to do here is basically create your shipping settings so it matches what's on your website. So I'm gonna set flat rate shipping, United States, US dollars, order cutoff time. This is when does someone need to order by to get delivered, you start delivering the next day. So 3 p.m. So I'm gonna put 3 p.m. here and West Coast. Handling time, the next one here, this is how long it takes in the warehouse before you actually ship it out. So sometimes that can take a few days depending on the product, the warehouse. Transit time, this is how long it takes once it leaves the warehouse to get to the customer. And this is gonna depend on your store, your products. I'm gonna put this in as an example. Great, advanced settings, that's minimum order value. Not gonna put that in for now, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. But you can set a minimum order value that someone needs to get this shipping rate. Next one here, holiday cutoff. Uh, so that's, you know, if you've got a big, you know, Black Friday uh, or Christmas, something like that, then you can actually put ones in for those big dates. So that someone has to, you know, order by this date to get it by the holiday. And then here you actually add in the shipping rates. So this is gonna be for all products. I'm gonna call it fixed rate, something like that. Flat rate's good. And then gonna create a single rate for all orders. This is because for this store, it's $5 shipping on all orders. Super easy. You're gonna add in what works for you there, but for my store, this is what works for me. Uh, just make it match your shipping settings. Click save, awesome, there it is. Back to surfaces across Google. And now we can go through the tax. Click set up tax. Now here, if you're in the US, you can get Google to set up your taxes automatically, it's awesome. So set up taxes in the States where you charge sales tax, recommended. Click that, click save. Now if you just click plus and you just select where you're located, it's gonna have this first one here where it says use Google to determine rate. So Google's gonna determine how much to display for the tax rate depending on where that person is actually located. So you can just click save and that's done. That's really easy. Wherever you are in the world, you know, you're gonna have to set up for yourself. But once you've set that up, boom, it's done. Cool. And now we're gonna set up our products. Okay guys, so now let's add in our products and we're gonna use the content API method. We're basically going to be doing everything in Merchant Center. Super easy, I'm in Merchant Center now. Uh, we're gonna go to products and here um, we're gonna add in individual products. So this means we add in products one at a time. It makes things really easy. It is hard to do if you have a lot of products. So check out the other two videos I've done where I use the Google Sheets method or the shopping app in Shopify method. I'll put a link in the description. But this method is great if you have less than 20 products or so. Um, it just keeps things really, really simple. So we're gonna go through right now. So United States, country of sale, that's fine. English is fine. Destinations, yep, that's fine. It's gonna go on shopping ads as well as the organic shopping ad services across Google. Uh, product identifiers. So we're gonna go through and we're basically gonna add in for, for our products all the uh, the different information. So for example, if you know, for product identifier, this is the GTIN or you know all these other numbers depending on what type of product it is. Um, you don't actually need this, um, but if you do have one, it is a good idea just because, oh, there are many reasons for this, but basically because Google will, will index the product based on the GTI and GTI is basically a global identification number for products. Uh, it's basically, basically like a barcode number. So it means that if someone else has already uploaded this product, Google has more information about that product Who's, who searches for it, who clicks on it, who converts, as well as all the reviews. So this has happened before in my experience where I've uploaded a product, put the GTIN in, that was the actual manufacturer GTIN, and then suddenly I had all these reviews showing on my shopping ads that weren't for my, my store. You know, there were other stores. And so that's a cool thing that can happen. Um, you don't need that. You can just use the brand. Um, that, that's totally fine. And some, you know, that's, yeah, that's, that's fine. You don't actually need that. Um, yeah. 
apart from that, you can also use an MPN, but no, let's, let's, let's do it without that just to keep things really simple. The ID or the SKU, you know, you're gonna go to your product and uh, get the, the SKU uh, yourself, whatever you've defined. I'm gonna keep things really simple and actually just use the, the, URL, the handle right there. And that just makes it easy for me because when I split out the campaigns in Google Shopping, this is what you'll actually see within the ad group to identify products. So if this is just a random string of numbers for you, it's gonna be a bit harder to, to see, oh, okay, that's that product, it's performing really well. When, when you have the ID or the S, the SKU there and it's more identifiable, it does make things a little bit easier, but it's not a big deal. Uh, then we're gonna do the title. So I'm just gonna copy this in from my website. You know, um, there's, I've got a whole video on optimizing your titles. You know, I really, I recommend doing that. I'm just gonna put this in now just so you can see what to add. But I would also add Astro Zombie Surfboard Twin Fin Six Foot. You know, something like that. Um, that just gives a bit more descriptive information about the product. You really wanna do your keyword research and I've got a video on keyword research as well. Do your keyword research and really uh, think about what people are searching for um, and structure your title around that because your title is the main thing that Google uses to figure out what your product is and who to show it for. Okay, the brand, you can put the actual brand, which would be Panda Panda it looks like. Um, I'm just gonna put in key surface. I like to put in my own brand sometimes, especially if I'm building a brand store. Description, throw that in as well. That's um, something else that you can optimize, which is really, really awesome um, for the keywords um, that I'm just gonna leave that as that. The, the URL is just gonna be the URL there. Awesome image link, that's really easy. You can upload one yourself or you can just copy it straight from the page. So right there, I just went to the page, right click, copy image address, super easy. And that just copied it um, right there. And then I'm just gonna remove this string at the end just to keep it nice and clean. You can also upload there if you want one specifically that isn't on your site already. You can also go to your Shopify site and go to the admin um, and then the files section. So let me see if I can show you right now. Um, my Shopify. Okay, let me pull this up. So for example, you'll see on here, this URL right there, key, you know, this is my Shopify URL, go into your admin and just type in slash settings slash files. And it's gonna go to the file section where you can see any images that you've uploaded and you can upload more and host them there. It's really, really easy. Um, okay, so I've got my image in there. That's awesome. The pricing, this is really important. So pricing $645. Awesome, very easy, US dollars, and it's in stock, no problem. It's gonna be new, it's not apparel, so don't worry about that, but if it is, you can put in the other details here, like the color, size, gender, and age group. All this stuff we've already set up already, so we can click save. And that's gonna go through. Awesome, fantastic, that's in there. And now it's being reviewed. We can then go in and add products, the exact same method, just go through and keep adding in all your products that you wanna add into your shopping campaigns and get them all in there. After we've done that, we now want to go and make sure that we get approved. So I'm gonna to go, to, go to all products. Awesome, cool. And because we've added an individual product, they're all gonna be here and we don't need to create an actual feed. Let's go over to diagnostics. Cool, that is now added in. Fantastic, it's pending, so wait till that gets approved. And then uh, once your products are all approved, we can then start our shopping ads. Now, a really good tip for you guys is instead of just creating your account, we can get a free credit from Google of $150 by just searching for Google Ads free credit. So go and do this right now and go click on this result here that has a Google Ads free credit. You're gonna click on that link, you're gonna go to this page and you're gonna enter in your email for your account. Now make sure you haven't set up your Google Ads account yet and you can enter your email and it's gonna actually send you that uh, link to redeem this credit. So let's do that now. Uh, click, yep, yeah, verify and then I'm gonna select the traffic lights. Awesome, fantastic. And it's gonna send us an email. Yeah, I've gotta select that. And then uh, send us an email that actually has a link to verify this. All right guys, so I've gone to my email inbox and this is what it looks like, the email, $150. Your $150 credit is here. Uh, here's the code here, but you just click redeem now and that's gonna then uh, open up your account and then you can apply it. Now I've already applied it here, uh, so I can't do this again by clicking this because it's just gonna do nothing. Uh, but that's what it looks like for you guys. So make sure you do that to get your account set up.
Okay guys, once you accept the, click the redeem link or you open up your new account, you're gonna get this page. Don't select a goal, go down to the bottom and click switch to expert mode. We wanna click that, that's gonna allow us to much more easily breeze through the setup and I'm gonna show you exactly what to do. You're now gonna see this screen, click the button, create an account without a campaign. We don't wanna create an account just yet and now you're gonna confirm your business information, just US, that's all what I need, but switch it to what uh, matches your business your time zone and the currency you're, you're, you want for your account. Okay, awesome. Now that we've done that, we can now create our campaigns and our account is now created. First thing we wanna do, go to settings and then go to switch to expert mode. Switch to expert mode, that's what we wanna do. Now we can see all the right settings for account. Really, really, really important guys. Now, the first thing we wanna do now is we want to link our Google Ads account to our Merchant Center account. So we go to tools and settings, and then we go down to linked accounts. It's gonna open up the linked accounts panel here. And what we wanna do is we wanna go down to the Google Merchant Center tab thing here and click details. And then now uh, it says to link your Google Merchant Center account, send a request from Merchant Center. So we need to go up here and see the ID over here. I'm gonna zoom in a bit right now. So see that ID right there. It, you know, Google can generally pick up if you have the same email across both accounts. So we want to go back to Merchant Center, go to Settings, the toolbar, and go to Linked Accounts. And then we'll see the Google Ads tab there. And now you'll see that it's already shown up here with the same ID. So just like I showed you that ID before, make sure that's the same ID so you got the same account. And that's all awesome. Yep, perfectly, that's confirmed. Now just click the button there that says Link. Now it's linked, it's gonna send the request to Google Ads. We need to go back to Google Ads here, I'm gonna refresh the page, and there we have it. There's the, the request, click view details, approve, yep, that's my website, click approve. We're now linked, our Google Merchant Center account and our Google Ads account are now linked, perfect. Okay guys, so we've linked Google Ads to Google Merchant Center, but the next really, really, really important thing to do is to set up conversion tracking with Google Analytics. Now this is so important guys because when we start getting conversions from these shopping campaigns, we're going to see them in Shopify, but we need to know what actually in your Google Ads account is causing those conversions. And not only that, but Google needs to know because for all its automated bidding strategies, Google uses all that conversion data to optimize those campaigns. So it is absolutely crucial. Do not skip this part, I repeat. Do not skip this part of the video. Let's go through this together. Let's set up our Google Analytics account link it to Google Ads and make sure conversion tracking is set up properly. This is incredibly important guys and I've never met like a client that has actually set this up. It's very rare, it's maybe once I've seen a client set this up properly. So we're gonna set this up together. Let's go to Google and search for Google Analytics and let's create our account. Go to that first result there, analytics.google.com, click that. We're gonna click start measuring. You're gonna put in the name of your website, for me, key surfers. We're gonna click, yep, web. Make sure that's selected, go next. Put in the website name, so mine is Key Surfers. Put in your website name, don't put in Key Surfers, of course. Now we're gonna get the website URL, so jump over to your website, grab the URL, and make sure you select HTTPS. I'm gonna grab the URL and just paste it straight in there, and I'm gonna keep the www, because that's what the actual URL is, and take away those, those bits at the end and the start. Sweet, so the industry category, this doesn't matter too much, but it just gives Google a bit more information. So uh, I'm gonna put in sports for us because we're selling surfing, surfing uh, surfboards. Reporting time zone, put this uh, in your own time zone. Great, now, so we have to agree to some legal stuff. Read this for yourself. You know, I, I'm not your lawyer, so read this for yourself, but select for your own country, of course, and accept, accept. Uh, make sure you read it yourself. Once done, click create. Now it's gonna ask about email communications. I like to remove this, I don't want spam. I don't like to fill up my email inbox. But I keep the top one on just because suggestions from Google can be good. Okay guys, let's now jump back to our website and install this. Okay, we're back in our Shopify dashboard and we're gonna to go to our online store and then preferences. So going down to the settings here and then uh, we're gonna scroll down to the part that has Google Analytics. This is exactly where we're gonna paste our code from that analytics dashboard. So go back to analytics and see that code, copy the whole thing, make sure you get the whole thing, the Google site tag. Get that, copy it, go back here, just paste it in. Super easy. Once that's done, click save. Save, check use enhanced e-commerce. Really important for us guys, don't leave this blank. Check that box, click save again. Go back to Google analytics and next we're going to go back to the settings here 
and we're gonna to go to click e-commerce settings and go on, on for an, an enable e-commerce and enable enhanced e-commerce reporting. Click save, go back, awesome. Now that's enabled. We wanna make sure we can test to make sure this is 100% working. So go back to tracking info, tracking code. Here it says no data received in the past 48 hours. So we need to go back, open up our website again, refresh it, and then see if Google Analytics registers, yep, I'm on the website. So go back, sometimes you have to refresh it a few times. It may take a moment, let's go back again. Spend a bit of time on the site, go back. Boom, it says one active user on the site right now. So yes, it's working, it's firing. That's one really easy way to do, to check if your analytics tag is working. All right guys, let's now go back to Google Ads and we're gonna link Google Ads to Google Analytics. Go to Tools and Settings, go to Linked Accounts, and then once it loads, Google Analytics details, it's gonna open up this tab here. Now, our account is here from Google Analytics because we have the same email on both accounts. It says not linked. So we wanna click actions on the right-hand side, click link, or turn auto tagging enabled as well. Click link, turn on both of these so it pulls in the site metrics and conversion tracking. Click save. And then I also like to turn on Google Optimize. That's just for later if you ever use Google Optimize. Awesome, now that that's done, that's enabled. It does take some time to pull in the data, uh, but you'll be able to get the conversion tracking set up right away. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna go up to conversions, tools and settings, conversions. Let's now set up our conversion tracking in the account, the final step here. So we're gonna click plus conversion. So let's create this conversion. We're gonna go to import on the right hand side. Now we're gonna click Google Analytics, click continue. Now it's already pulling in transactions. So we just click that. Uh, check the box, transactions, it's gonna pull in the actual transaction information, import and continue. You've imported one transaction from Google Analytics, awesome, continue. All right guys, so we have our transaction conversion there, click that transaction conversion, open that up, we got the settings. We wanna change one setting here that's really important for you guys, so in the bottom right hand corner, click edit settings. It's gonna open up the settings now, all of these are fine. Don't worry about all these top ones here. What we really care about is that bottom one, attribution model. Now, I need to explain something very important here and why we're actually changing this. So the attribution model is, this is how Google attributes a conversion across your account. Okay, so let me explain this well. So say someone sees your shopping campaign, they see one product and they click on that product, they visit your website, but they don't convert. The next day, they come back and search again, but they click a different product in your shopping campaign, click on that, go to the website, and then they convert on that product. Now, when this happens, that registers as a conversion in your account. Now, think about this. You've cl got two clicks and one conversion. How does Google attribute that conversion across those clicks? Does it say the second product had one conversion? Or do they say the first product had a conversion? Or do they say half a conversion each? This is really important because without this data, we won't know what played a role in that conversion, what, what product what keywords uh, or, or what you know what we need to bid on. So it is so important that we get this right, guys, if we're gonna manage our accounts on a profit basis based on what's actually working. And the last click model, which what is what Google sets as default, will only attribute that conversion to the last click. So it could be that second product. Even if someone actually converted on the first product, but they clicked the second product, you know, and they, they had clicked both of them, it's gonna only show the last one. And you can see the problem here is that when you start running branding campaigns, which are very important, I've got a whole video on these, uh, it's gonna show the brand campaign as making the most conversions, even if someone came through the shopping campaign first. And so we're gonna think, oh, that shopping campaign isn't working because it's not getting conversions, when really it is getting conversions, but people are actually clicking a second time before they convert. And this is normal. It's a normal funnel where people click multiple times before they convert. You'll see strong brands have you know 30 to 40% of conversions happen after more than one click. So we wanna change this, so click this and go down to position-based. I prefer position-based because it attributes that conversion over multiple clicks, multiple ads, multiple keywords, whatever, whatever the data points are, and it gives the weight to the first and the last click and then spreads out the rest of the conversion data in between. Now, most of your clicks, again, most of your conversions that have more than one click are gonna be two clicks. You know, Very few times people click three, four, five, six. It does happen, but it's much more rare. So we wanna click uh, position base, get that set up, set that in the account, um, and that's gonna then split up those conversions over all the campaigns based on how people click uh, before they convert. And that's really important because now we can manage these campaigns on a profit basis. So once you've set that in, we're gonna click save, and then gonna click done, and then we're good to go. Okay, so we go back to the, the main dashboard for Google Ads and we're gonna create our campaign. So you can click new campaign there or click that plus sign and then click new campaign, doesn't matter. 
selector. You'll see this window here where we can select the goal of the campaign. Some people don't like to set the goal, but I do. I like to give Google a bit more information about what we're trying to do here. So click sales. Of course, we want our shopping campaign to generate sales. Down here in the campaign type, click shopping. Super easy. Of course, it's a shopping campaign. And then it's going to pull in the emergency center account right there. That's fantastic. Now we need to select the country that we're selling to. So United States for this campaign. It's going to select the standard shopping campaign. That's totally fine. That's what we want. Click continue. Now we're going to go through and change the settings. So set your name. So, you know, Google shopping, um, all products is what I'm going to put for this one. The bidding strategy, very important here, guys. Select manual CPC with enhanced CPC. Don't start with an automated bidding strategy. Don't start with maximized clicks. Don't start with target ROAS. Google needs conversion data before it can start using these strategies. You need to start, get some traffic first. And if you start with these strategies, you can do that, but Google's gonna spend a lot more money very, very quickly. Uh, you, you're not gonna be able to control the bids. I really recommend, and this is what, and I talk about this in a lot of my videos. I have a whole video on setting up your settings, whole video on what bidding strategy to use starting off. And I have a whole video on how to manage those bids on an ongoing basis. And manual CPC is what I've used time and time again to scale up dozens and dozens of campaigns into you know five, six figure campaigns. So set it to manual CPC, the budget. Now I recommend 30 to $50 or more per day but really the budget is just going to limit how quickly you can get data. It's not going to affect the actual results unless you don't have time to manage it. So if you're, if you really want to save a lot of money, you could do $5, but it's just going to take a long time and it's going to take like a week before you can make any changes. But I'm just going to put $5 in for now. The campaign priority, a lot of other uh, PPC media buyers don't understand this, but campaign priority doesn't matter if you have just one campaign. All it does is that it prioritizes which campaign in your account for uh, the search queries for shopping. So if you have three campaigns and you're running a multi-campaign structure for shopping, yeah, that's when it matters. And then you can filter which campaign gets triggered first um, here. But so for one campaign, just put low, it doesn't matter. Uh, targeting for networks, really important here, guys. Turn these off, especially if it's your first campaign and you're new. Uh, this basically, uh, if you leave it to default, this basically says to Google, hey, you can show my ads across other partners. So that might be Yahoo, maybe Gumtree, all these other websites and search engines that Google has partnerships with. The problem there is that I have only once in my whole life of auditing accounts have ever seen an account where these performed better than Google Ads. Now, you can do it because they can still be profitable for you, but only once have I ever seen it be better, and that was also with only 100 clicks, so it wasn't very statistically significant. So I recommend here uh, turning these off because you wanna concentrate all your data onto Google Shopping, especially if you have a limited budget because you just wanna focus on what can really work and get you profitable as soon as possible. So turn this off. Uh, the second one here is YouTube Gmail and Discover. I have a whole video on getting your shopping ads onto YouTube. Uh, I don't recommend having it in the same campaign here as your first campaign. Let's keep it really simple, guys. Just focus on what can make it profitable. So don't, so turn this one off. So don't, don't check this box here. The next bit here is devices. That's fine. We want to show it on all devices. Locations. Okay, make sure you select your location where you're selling to, but check the location options down below. So select this uh, location options and you'll see here that it pulls out that there are all these different options. Make sure you select the second one. This is not the default one that Google sets, it's the second one. And this is so important guys because this actually makes sure that Google only shows in your location. The first option, which is default, means that Google's gonna show your ads to people that have just shown interested interest in your location. And I talk about this in all my other videos, guys, so check out my channel and I talk about this problem all the time. Uh, but I've seen on accounts that this can actually waste up to five to 10% of your ad spend on people that aren't even in the US or aren't even in Australia or wherever you're selling your products to. So check this on the second one, just so that you do show your products, your e-commerce. So you can only ship to certain areas, you know? So uh, you only wanna ship to people's homes and if they're in, the, in that location, that's when you, you actually wanna show these ads to them. So make sure you select that second one there and then that's good to go. All right guys, so now we get this page here and we're not gonna set up showcase shopping, we're gonna set up regular shopping, so just leave the first one selected, go down to the next bit here and we're gonna enter in the ad group name. You can just put in all products because I'm gonna show you how to split these up later. And then for the bid, okay, this is important guys. Generally, I start with 50 cents to a dollar, usually about a dollar, but if you are on a really tight budget, start with say 25 cents because you can always change this later. And I have a whole video on how to manage the bids using the actual data. Uh, but if you're on a real budget, start with 25 cents and then wait, watch, watch it for one to three days. If it's not getting any impressions, so views, any impressions at all, then to start increasing your, then start increasing your bid uh, bit by bit. So get up to 50 cents, maybe 75 cents and then $1 because 
if you set it to say $3, well, Google's gonna spend $3, you're gonna get a lot of clicks and you're just gonna use up your whole budget. We often start with $1 um, and then we'll increase or decrease from there. Keep in mind that as well, you know, I wanna get done as quick as possible and I'm okay with spending money because I know that I can optimize it really quickly. I know what I'm doing. So for me, I don't really mind spending a little bit more at the start just because if I'm waiting three weeks to get enough data to make some good changes, then that's three weeks that I could be getting sales. So really for me, it's like a cost benefit analysis of time and profit. So yeah, so I'd recommend starting off with a uh, dollar if you can afford that. Otherwise start off with 25 cents to 50 cents around that, that, that point there and then increasing as you go. Okay, so we can just put in 50 cents just for, just for this campaign here. So I'm gonna put in 50 cents and then click save. So now our campaign has been created. So you'll see at the top says, you cannot show ads to so start running your ads, enter your billing information, click fix it. So we need to set up our, our credit card in the account so we can start running our ads. So you're gonna put it, all your details in here. I won't go through this right now, but make sure you add your details there before you can run your shopping campaigns. All right guys, so now we're in the ad groups of our shopping campaign here. There's only one ad group, all products. Now we're gonna learn how to split out this ad group and bid on individual products. So go over to the products, click that all products name there. It's gonna open up the, the actual product group here. Click the plus sign, add subdivision. And then at the top, we're gonna do uh, item ID, click item ID. And then we're gonna select all the products. Click continue to edit bids, click save. And now you can see that we have all the products here and we can edit each bid individually. Previously, we were just bidding 50 cents for every single product, but you'll see that as you get more data, you'll be able to change the bids based on what's actually profitable. And I have a whole video on this um, where I show you how to manage the bids on an ongoing basis. It's really, really powerful stuff, guys. And that's how you set up those campaigns, how I set things up every, you know, all the time for all, all my, my stores and clients that are all there, ready to go. One last thing I wanna show you guys is setting up columns. So on the right hand side here, click the button that says columns and then click performance here. You'll see a bunch of other columns we can add. So CTR, click through rate. We can add that to actually view extra metrics for our account, our shopping campaign. Once we start click getting data, you can click columns again. Let's go to conversions. So here we can add in the total sales, the conversion value, conversion value, the ROAS, and we can see all that data here. But once you start getting conversion data, you'll be able to see that in here, all the metrics. And I have a whole video on metrics I'll put a link in the description on that one, but it's really important here, guys. Anyway, that's how you set up your campaigns, guys. That's everything. Um, so there, now we've set up our campaigns. That's all your shopping campaigns, guys. Okay, guys, so what do we need to do now that we've built our campaigns? We need to optimize and scale them. I've created a bunch of videos on my channel to help you grow and scale your Google Shopping campaigns. The most important one that you should watch right now is about improving your product pages. You spend all this time setting up your Google Shopping campaign, so you don't wanna just send them to a website that really sucks. I've made an epic video on how to improve your product page to make it world-class for e-commerce and get conversion rates in the three to 10% range. This will save you a ton of money on your Google Shopping campaigns, so go and check that out. Seriously, every e-commerce store owner needs to watch that video, so go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Two other videos that are very useful for you guys for improving your shopping campaigns are, one, my video where I show you how to optimize your shopping campaigns, and two, my video on how to do manual bidding for Google Shopping campaigns. The second video shows you step-by-step -step on how to do manual bidding using my own template that you can use for your own campaigns. I've made over $12 million with this same method and no one else is teaching it, no one else really knows it because I came up with it myself. It's something that I've been using for a couple of years now, my whole team use it and it's pretty awesome. Anyway guys, that's it for today's video. If this video was helpful, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing if you wanna learn more about growing your e-commerce store. And if you have any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as quick as I can. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.